sit out the window, I sit out the law, I'm gonna see what the shuffle man saw. Hi everybody, it's Bill. I'm here today with Scott, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, Robin Hitchcock, who is a, a bit of a cult figure, to say the least, but uh, within the cult, he's very, very well regarded. And we're going to talk about a brand new album that's just coming out. Uh, it's his first record in uh, five years, which in his career terms, that's a pretty lengthy uh, period of time. So obviously there are a few things that have gone on that have caused that to occur. And uh, we're gonna uh, check in with Scott, who's gonna fill us in with what, uh, what's what been happening and what the uh, end results have been. Scott? Yeah, thanks, Bill. Uh, Shuffle Mania was released uh, a week or two ago by Robin Hitchcock. Uh, and this was his pandemic record. You know, this is... Uh, uh, he's now living in Nashville with his, uh, with his wife. And I guess during the pandemic, during the lockdown and everything, he just spent some time as a lot of people did, you know, we're starting to see a lot of these records come out over, uh, dribbling out in the last few months, uh, where he just, you know, basically was just going into his, 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 uh, his own studio that he has there at home. And, uh, and just recording a song here, doing a, uh, recording there, here and there. And uh, and apparently, the best I can figure out, there's no real uh, story here that I could find exactly what happened. But the best I could figure out here is that he essentially uh, took, uh, you know, got a got basically an album's worth of songs, I guess, that he'd recorded over a couple of years period, uh, by himself with just him and his wife uh, Emma, and I think. What happened here was that uh, he got a bunch of his friends because there are several guest stars on this album. And I, th I think it was one of these where he might have sent out uh, tapes or recordings, you know, digital, whatever, uh, to his uh, friends all over the place in Europe and wherever the heck they are. And then they may have just overdubbed some uh, some parts on these and he pulled them all together and and made an album out of them. Uh, again, called Shuffle Mania. Uh, this is uh, available. You can you can buy this on uh, Amazon. You can get it on Bandcamp. But I'm noticing that uh, he's doing an interesting little thing here. This, it, it, he released it on his own record label, and and he's made the physical media available. He's re, he's released a digital version of this album on Bandcamp. But it's not going to be available to the streaming services until uh, later in November. Uh, so if you go to uh, Apple Music or Spotify or whatever to find this album, what you're going to find is two singles that he's released from this album. Don't forget to function. Don't need one of those. I'm going to go where the shovel man goes. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Ready for the bagels, ready for the hoot, ready to fly around the world in the shuffle man's boot. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. But nothing else is available. But there, but but then if uh, if you look at the uh, text on the uh, on the streaming services, it says it'll be available on November twenty second. Uh, well, this was actually released on October 22nd. So he was taking a month where he was just selling it on Bandcamp and then selling it physical media on uh, on Amazon and other outlets. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh, how that turns out. Whether that's a good marketing strategy, I, I've never uh, I haven't uh, encountered that before. Uh, I was a huge huge fan of Robin Hitchcock back in the middle eighties into the early nineties, mostly during his uh period with the Egyptians. Uh, I got on to him when I first heard the album uh, uh Element of Light in 1986, which was uh, uh credited to Robin Hitchcock and the Egyptians. Uh the the Egyptians as if you remember uh, Hitchcock started out he 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 burst out on the scene with a band called the Soft Boys, who was, uh, and the band was pretty much regarded now as as a fairly influential band, uh, leading into the alternative uh, 
rock of the 80s and 90s uh they were uh, they were pretty well regarded among fans of uh of of power pop things like that uh the soft boys were back around in the late 70s i think they uh disbanded in 79 or 80 somewhere like that hitchcock uh, began his solo career in 1981, and then in 1985, he put together a band called Robin Hitchcock and the Egyptians. And the Egyptians, I think, were actually one or two guys who uh, who were former bandmates with him in the Soft Boys. And he recorded six albums with the Egyptians uh, in late late 80s, early 90s. I was a big fan of those albums. Uh, the Egyptians were dissolved in 1993 after they made an album called Respect. And I stuck with Hitchcock in a solo career through Moss Elixir in 96, Jewels for Sophia in 1999. But about that time, it started getting to the point with me where I started feeling, okay, we're, we're just uh we're just doing the same things over and over again there's you know it's like we're we're in that phase of his career and 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 i fell off the robin hitchcock train uh but i was uh, up until that point i was a huge fan and i hadn't checked back with him since uh since 1999 until shuffle mania uh was released and i went and listened to this one and just uh to uh to put the lead uh, out front here now now we're well into the story already but, <laughs> but let me get to the lead here um uh, shuffle mania it's it's a it's a good robin hitchcock album you know it, it, like i said it's one of these is kind of put together in pieces by parts by you know with, with with people uh just adding parts here and adding parts there you know it, it's never never was a band who got in a studio and worked together or anything like that but it's there's some there's some really good robin hitchcock songs here uh and and it's a and it's a good album but i have to tell you i'm listening to this and i still have that been there done that feeling with this there's nothing new here there's nothing surprising here uh the uh, like i said the biggest news here is that it's it's pretty good it's it's not you know it's it's not it, it doesn't have a feel like it's just robin hitchcock just putting out product to be putting out product it, it it's pretty good product it's just uh uh it's just yeah okay i i'm ready to hear something different from robin and something different is not here uh along for the ride are people like kimberly rue from the uh soft boys uh, and, Morris, and and right and kimberly rue also was uh he was one of the uh, founders of uh katrina and the waves right and uh but but he was he was an old uh hitchcock bandmate with the soft boys he's here uh pat sansone is here from uh wilco <laughs> that makes bill happy uh johnny marr from the smiths turns up here uh in a couple of tracks uh there are a couple of people who I recognize the name, but I'm not, you know, I, I don't know much who they are. I think there's a a, a, a Swedish uh, pop star named Frokadal uh, is here doing some uh, harmony vocals uh, with a, and a couple of tracks. And uh, and Hitchcock's wife, Emma Swift, is here. Emma is a uh, country singer. She, she built a career as a country singer songwriter. And she actually, uh, uh, she actually drew uh, Robin to uh, Nashville to to uh, <laughs> to go live and uh, and work in Nashville. So that's that's where they are now. Um, also, here is uh, one surprise guest. Here is uh, on the last track of the album. One day it's being scheduled. Uh, we have an appearance from uh, Sean Ono Lennon. It turned up. I have no idea how that connection was made, but that was that was a pretty surprising little addition. Uh, yeah, this it's, this is typical, uh, you know, sort of straightforward. I, I, I call I say it's straightforward. I mean, it, it's it's uh, it's Robin Hitchcock just in singer songwriter mode. I, you know, it's not it's not all acoustic. I mean, there's some electric. Uh, uh things going on here a little bit of rock and roll but nothing nothing like uh a full band like the soft boys and uh and the egyptians uh 
you know, they're 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 straight up Robin Hitchcock. And uh, some pretty good tracks here, uh, some and some typically eccentric Robin Hitchcock uh, topics here. You know, or you know, he's he's got a reputation for you know he 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 would sing a lot of songs about uh, you know anthropomorphic fish and <laughs> and space yeah. travel and. When my and, kids were calling up, uh, they they loved uh, Balloon Man. Uh, right, and, yeah. Uh, Brenda's Iron Sledge and uh, my wife and my dead wife. My wife and my dead uh, little wife. That was always <laughs> one of my favorites. Yeah. Nice yeah but song. this is this is uh, it, this it's uh, it's all there and it's all clever and it's all strange. I mean, it, it's you know, I mean that it, it's the kind of stuff that you that you would think that there's a real danger of just. The guy becoming a self parody, right? Or he's just like forcing the stuff, but it's not. I mean, this this is this is this is Robin Hitchcock. That's just who the guy is, and it, it and and this isn't this isn't Robin Hitchcock doing Robin Hitchcock as a, you know as, as a as a as a thing of the path. This is just Robin Hitchcock being Robin, right? Uh, I, I don't know if 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 you understand the distinction I'm making there. He's not parodying himself. He's still being himself. Uh, a track called "The Raging Muse" uh, here, uh, and the first song on side two. Let me, I, let me try to say this correctly. Noir than noir. It's noir than noir, right? <laughs> noir than noir. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that's something typical. Typical that, that Hitchcock could, would come up with. Uh, the Midnight Tram to Nowhere. You know, he would sing a lot of songs about trains and trams back in the day and taking rides. The Inner Life of Scorpio, The Shuffle Man. And this is just all typical Robin Hitchcock stuff. And I would, if 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 I first heard this album back, uh, let me let me restate this. This sounds exactly like a good Robin Hitchcock album that you might have heard around 1989, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this this would have this would have fit perfectly in in his catalog to what he was doing back then. Uh, as like I say, I, I was a little disappointed because I hadn't heard any Robin Hitchcocks uh, in a couple of decades, and it was like, you know, that my first reaction was, "This is the same old, same old." And I don't know, you know, maybe that's that's an issue for me, you know, and not with Robin. I don't know. You can make your own judgment on on that, whether Robin's at fault or I'm at fault for that. Um, Socrates and Thin Air is another title of a of a record, and and there's typical uh, Robin Hitchcock uh, lines going on here. Uh, what respect the dead because soon you're going to be one of them. <laughs> That's one of my favorite Hitchcock lines from this. But yeah, typical Robin Hitchcock. Uh, it's got he's a good voice. His, his voice is as strong as ever. Uh, his wit is as sharp as ever. His ex eccentricities are as eccentric as ever. And if you're if you're just looking for a a, a new good robin hitchcock record this is it go out and get it uh if you're looking for something you know different or surprising uh you're not going to find it here yeah i would say uh from my take uh scott this is actually probably a good starter record for for somebody who doesn't know anything about this guy it, at all. it would be it would be because it, it's 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 perfect robin hitchcock yeah, it's it's very distilled to me. I mean, I always thought of Hitchcock as kind of like Nick Lowe's uh, younger, weirder brother. Uh, maybe it's that. Maybe it's the haircut or something. But I, they they had a lot of similarities uh, in common, especially the kind of a sharp wit. Uh, you know, good good ability to write a, a catchy tune, uh, a little a little oddball, and then you know Nick kind of went his increasingly uh, country singer songwriter way which is all fine and dandy but i don't particularly find it to my cup of tea and uh robin as you said he kind of he did his thing so many times that you started to get uh you know overexposed to the same thing i mean you knew what the methodology was going to be like and uh it seemed to be not generating the same sort of return on investment in terms of listening. And then uh, exactly, exactly. I just kind of gave up similarly. And uh, mm -hmm. I was intrigued. There was a period where he was with uh, 
I think it was the Venus Three with with Peter Buck and uh, Scott McCauley and uh, the drummer from Ministry, whose name I can't recall. Uh, but uh, that was interesting. But it was more interesting for for who they were than the the stuff that actually came out of it. Um, and then I just kind of gave up. And then I saw about five years ago. I listened to it once, and I I kind of liked it. That was the the record that we were talking about. Pre the, the predecessor to this, which is just called Robin Hitchcock and uh, Brendan Benson, who is uh, in the Rock on Tours with Jack White and is, uh, you know, quite a, a well-regarded uh, producer and musician. I think he produced that one. He, I think he's on this record too, but he's he didn't produce it. This is a this is a Hitchcock thing. So, uh, I, I I mean I, I like it a lot. I think it's a good record. I agree with you. It's not you know going to change the world. And if you've heard a lot of good mid-period Hitchcock, that's what you're going to get here. But you know, it is nice to see him still doing it and still delivering, you know, a pretty high quality piece of product. Uh, yeah, I mean, it it it, it makes it makes me happy that he's still he, he that he's he still has it in him. You know, he hasn't become one of these guys who, who like I say, he's just uh, he he he's not he's not one of these guys who's just uh, uh, throwing product out there just because he can sell some product. You know, I mean, it, it, he still has he still has inspiration and he still has things to say. It's just not it's not just not much different than what he's been doing for the last few decades. You know, but which is good. I mean, if, if there's still good material there, <laughs> keep bringing it out. Now I have not listened to any of his, uh, uh, output from the two thousands. This is, this is the first one that I've heard since uh, 1999. The three that he did with the Venus three, I'm looking at this discography here. We're, we're in the late aughts. Um, uh, and it looks like he was he was pretty prolific actually in the early 2010s. He released a record in 2010, 2011, 2013, 2014, and 2017, and then he took the break. A lot of that might have had to do with uh, you know with the way the world was then. I have not heard Robin Hitchcock the 2017 album, but you know just going and doing a little bit of reading, I understand that he he gets uh, uh, it, it, he does get a little more. Uh, heavy-handed and uh uh and, and more into the uh early psychedelia soft boys type of psychedelia deal with that so that's that's probably my next assignment uh I, I just didn't have didn't really have time to go in and uh and and get involved in that one before we recorded this but that but but i definitely want to check it out because what i read about it sounds pretty interesting so uh uh so i am interested in uh going back and listening to that one just because of what I read of it. Uh yeah, Hitchcock was uh he's he's been around a long time. <laughs> he's been around a long, long time. He's never had this big, huge breakthrough. He uh his his work his stuff with the Egyptians in the uh, late eighties, back in the day, that was back in the days when college radio was a thing, right? Uh FM radio. And I think he 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 made a little bit of a dent you know in the in the college radio sphere and that's that's actually where i picked him up when i first heard him with uh with the egyptians uh it's funny i mean if you think about you know at that that period he, he, so uh jonathan demi actually uh you know the the uh, filmmaker who who did the the one of the greatest rock and roll movies ever the, the talking heads uh stop making sense he did a he made an album or a, a film rather on uh Robin Hitchcock, which we you would think would kind of do something to catapult his visibility, but it really didn't it, do it much. Did yeah, Starfront Hitchcock was the name of it, and and this was when Hitchcock was in a period. This is after the Egyptians broke up, and Hitchcock was just showing. And I saw him a couple of times on on stage doing this. He just showed up with a guitar, and he and he was a so. I mean, he, he was a solo artist. A lot of a lot of folks I've I've seen done that since then, re, and released albums since then. But, but Hitchcock was the first time I saw that. I went to see him at a little club in uh, in Alexandria, Virginia, back in the day, about eighty nine or ninety, and uh, and he just showed up on stage with a guitar, and he did a whole show. It was just him standing there playing the guitar, and you know, playing some of his some of his electric songs and some new songs they wrote. That was when the album I came out in 1990. And that's what, that's what I was, was just, was just Hitchcock uh, doing solo. He's, he's done that a few times since then. Um, but, but yeah, but, but he, he, he certainly has a different, uh, 
he had different eras that uh, you know if you if you find one not so interesting, well another one you might find is the, the soft boys. Soft boys are just good rock and roll, good pop, sort of a uh, uh, it was sort of a distillation of uh, of uh, Sid Barrett. You know, it, 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 oh, a, lot of, a lot of people said, it. I mean, he was it's like Robin Hitchcock was uh, Sid Barrett's uh, stepson and 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 uh, uh, and brought that into uh, into sort of the uh, Alex Chilton uh, power pop field with the soft boys. And it's very, very interesting stuff. They only recorded a couple of albums. Uh, the one underwater moonlight is considered a classic. Uh, my favorite was actually a compilation of outtakes called Invisible Hits from the Soft Boys, which I thought was very good. A song like uh, Rock and Roll Toilet was, was one of my favorite ever songs. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, and then he did a couple of three solo albums and I got back with the Egyptians where he kind of went back more into the, that Soft Boys mode for a little bit, you know, with electric and rock and roll. But but he most but but he's mostly since uh since the late nineties has just been doing solo stuff. Uh but uh anyway, uh yeah, check it out if 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 you're interested, if you've always heard about Robin Hitchcock, and if you're kind of interested and you do want to check him out, Shuffle Mania, this new one is a great place to start. Thing is, you know, people I don't know why people ever actually introduce songs because the song itself is its introduction to itself. It's like if you meet somebody named Martha, they say, this is Martha. I mean, you know, that person happens to be known as Martha, just as I might be called Bloomingdale's, or, or you know, Denny might be called Staten Island, but that's really only the beginning of the story. You know, Martha is a whole mass of molecules and complexes and things bound together by terrifying physical improbabilities. And the truth is she could fly apart at any moment like some terrible pent-up lock that's waiting to snap and spatter her psyche across the universe. God knows, it is disgusting, Denny, it's life, you know, if it weren't for our rib cages, there would just be spleens a go-go, you know? I mean, you know, people are just held in by all this stuff, and then they're, they're called almost insultingly a single name. And the same with the song, I mean, I, I can say what the song's called, which isn't going to be much of a clue unless you've heard it before, or I can explain what it's about, and I'm going to be lying. So... Uh, in the end, there's very much, there's not, not much point, really. Ah, that's interesting. There's some people polishing a gun carriage over there. One of those brass 18th century things for storing in time capsules. There's a very thin line between torture and cosmetics. <laughs> I wonder if I... Now's our chance to cross it.